Okay, so let's, uh, we're going to continue on with polar coordinates. This is part two. Uh, let's talk about the relationship between polar and Cartesian coordinates. Okay, so let's draw, you know, so let's draw, let's say this is my x-axis, this is my y-axis. Let's say I have a polar point here represented by, you know, some radius and some angle right here. So um, this can be, so we're assuming this is in the first quadrant, but it can be generalized. What I'm going to write down is um, um, works for any value of theta. So whatever value of theta you want, um, this will work. Um, so if you look at, you know, what is, what is cosine of theta here? Cosine of theta, so that's going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. Well, the adjacent side is this blue one down here. So the adjacent side is then the x value of whatever the coordinate is. And the hypotenuse is the radius there, the distance from the origin. Uh, sine theta, similarly. So the opposite side for sine is going to be the red one. So it's going to be y over r, over the hypotenuse r. So if I solve these for x and y, I'm going to get x is equal to r cosine theta and y is equal to r sine theta. Um, and this is going to be, these are going to be my relations between um, polar and Cartesian coordinates. So, um, so yeah, so let's uh, do a couple problems um, where we just... Um, uh, where we so we're gonna do a couple problems where we work through this. Last thing I want to say is um, from this from this we can derive. Uh, so if you look at um, x squared plus y squared here, that's gonna be r squared cosine squared theta plus r squared sine squared theta. So you have x squared plus y squared is r squared cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. Cosine squared plus sine squared is one. Um, sorry, that's supposed to be a y. Uh, so uh, this is going to be r squared times one, so just r squared there. Uh, so this is another really important relationship. Um, so this, um, this gets, so uh, what, uh, what, so yeah, so let me uh, point this out. Um, this is useful, so this first one here, useful so it's useful for converting polar to Cartesian so you know given polar coordinates you plug it into this x equals r cosine theta y equals r sine theta and it gives you x and y um, and this one is useful for converting from Cartesian to polar. Uh, so, okay, so we have x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. That's not enough information. I also need the angle. So if I look at, if I look at these relations up here, um, if I look at x divided by y, uh, let's do y divided by x actually. So y divided by x then will be r sine theta divided by r cosine theta. And again, you need to be careful that r is not equal to zero here. Again, that's one of those weird situations um, that we kind of sweep under the rug here. Uh, so the r's cancel, and I'm gonna be left with y over x is equal to sine theta over cosine theta. So y over x is equal to tan theta. I can use this to solve for angle. So I'm not going to take the arc tan, the arc tan here, um, because uh, so you have to remember that arc tan only spits out values between negative pi and over two and pi over two, and we're going to need to take into account that you know 
Um, so that only tells you things in the first and fourth quadrant if you take the arctan right now. Uh, so we'll need to be careful and look at, you know, the values, the signs, S-I-G-N-S's -S -S of Y and X in order to figure out which quadrant they are in because it's not everything's going to be in the first and fourth quadrant. Um, so let's do an example. So convert to pi over 3 from uh, polar to Cartesian. So this one's not too bad. So this is going to be x is equal to r cosine theta. So I want, I want the xy values. This is going to be 2 times cosine pi over 3. Cosine of pi over 3 is a half. So this is going to be 1. Y then will be r sine theta, which is 2 sine pi over 3. Uh, sine pi over 3 is square root of 3 over 2. This is going to be radical 3. So in Cartesian coordinates, the point 2 comma pi over 3 is the same thing in, sorry, in polar coordinates, 2 comma pi over 3 is the same thing as 1 comma square root of 3 in Cartesian coordinates. So it's just um, using these formulas that I just derived um, to figure out, to convert uh, between these two systems. So let's do example three. Uh, so we have convert one negative one um, to polar, from Cartesian to polar. So you'll notice that I'm always specifying, you know, which coordinates I'm in. Um, so, you know, sometimes it's obvious, like in this first, this last example I did, the pi over three tells you that that's, that's going to be an angle. Um, but there's, you know, you want to be specific when you write down a set of coordinates, which coordinates you're in. Because um, you could use one negative one in polar coordinates. That is a polar coordinate. Um, it's just um, not one that you'll, that's... Um, easily recognizable as polar. Uh, okay, so for this one, we're going to use r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. So this tells me r squared is equal to 1 squared plus negative 1 squared. So r squared then is equal to 2. That tells me r is equal to radical 2. So I have my distance from the origin here, my radius. It's square root of 2. Now I need my angle. So this is the one, this is that um, relationship up there. Tan theta is equal to y divided by x. So that tells me tan theta is equal to, um, so y is negative 1 divided by 1. And so you'll notice what I've done here is I've, made, I've been really specific about which one is uh, negative here. So I put parentheses around the y. The reason I'm doing this is because, again, when I take the arctan, I need to make sure that I'm in the right quadrant. So, for example, um, the point negative 1, 1 here, it's going to be in the fourth quadrant. Um, so I can, you know, I can do this actually safely. Uh, but the problem is, you know, if I had landed in the third or the second or third quadrant, um, the arctan wouldn't give me the right answer. So then I, what I have here is theta is equal to the arctan of negative 1 over 1. This is the arctan of negative one. Because again, I'm in the fourth quadrant, it's fine. Uh, this is going to be negative pi over four. So in polar coordinates, this is the point square root of two, negative pi over four. Uh, and you could have also, so I, I did you know, a negative angle. You could have also tried and found, found the positive angle. Uh, it's gonna be that angle plus two pi. Uh, so 7 pi over 4. Um, it's, it doesn't matter. They represent the same thing. It's, for me, it's easier to do the negative pi over 4. So it's, it's again, whatever's, whatever's easy um, for you. Um, okay, so just one uh, note. So x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. And... 
tan theta is equal to y over x. Do not uniquely determine um, any do not uniquely determine points. So what I mean by that is, you know, I took the arctan here, right? The arctangent is periodic. Uh, sorry, tangent is periodic. Um, so another angle that would have worked here would have actually been uh, negative nine pi over four. That would have also worked for an angle because I've just subtracted two pi from um, negative pi over four. Um, and you can, you know, do that however many times you want. Um, so, um, so what you want to do with this is, you know, you want to be careful. Um, so you want to be careful. You always, so typically you'll want to stay in the uh, zero to two pi range. Um, you also, again, want to be careful uh, when determining determining uh, theta. So let's look back up at this picture. So uh, I had the arctan of negative one um, here, uh, which was uh, negative pi over four. Um, so uh, that's not the only, um, so that's not the only angle uh, that'll give you uh, negative one here. So this point also, so this is the point, uh, let's see. So that's going to be, um, so that's going to be the point uh, one, neg uh, sorry, negative one, one in this case. That's the point negative one, one there. That would also give you, you know, if you took the arctan of that, that would also give you, um, negative pi over four. So what I'm, what, I, what I'm saying with this is you need to be careful uh, when you're doing the arctan here. You need to make sure that you're in the right quadrant. When I drew this, I saw, you know, y was negative one and x was one. So I knew I was in the fourth quadrant. But if it had been reversed, if x had been negative one and y had been one, I would have been in the third quadrant. And I would need to take that into account when I find the arctan. Because remember, when I, when I, you know, if I plug this into a calculator, Arctan is only going to tell me something from the second and or the first and fourth quadrant there. Um, so that's just something to be careful of. Always think about which quadrant you're in based off of your X and Y values here. So you always need to double check that. So I'm going to stop the video here. We're going to continue on. We're going to talk about, you know, how these, how functions can be represented in, um, in polar coordinates, what kind of curves we're going to get. Um, so this, so yeah, so I'll stop here.